Hey everybody! So I'm going to be showing you a tutorial video on how I made the Her Boots Collage Kit by Laura Heine. And you can get this, the kit and the pattern, which is sold separately at Laura Heine's online quilt shop at fiberworks heinecom And I'll put the link in the description of this video. You don't have to use her fabrics to make this, this uh, project, but you can. And just a little disclaimer, Laura Heine does have certified teachers that teach her projects. I am not one of those people. I have never taken a collage quilting class, but I, I just watch tutorial videos online and read the directions. And I think there's multiple ways to skin a cat and this is the way I do it. So hopefully my video helps you and I can give you some tips or tricks on how I accomplish doing a collage quilt. So let's get started. Okay, here we have the kit and the pattern. And inside the pattern you have this, which you're gonna trace the boots onto later on. And inside the kit, you have your fabrics. And I'll show you the fabric so you have an idea. This blue fabric is going to be your binding fabric. And then you have these background fabrics here. And on top, these are your florals. Those will be for your flower decorations. And on the left, those three fabrics on the left are for your boots. And like I said earlier, you do not have to use these fabrics to do this project. You can use whatever fabrics you want. And then on the back of the pattern, it has the list of everything you're going to need. I'll highlight to show you everything I'm highlighting right here. This is the list of all the fabrics that you need. And that's what the kit comes with. And then you need about two yards of 24 inch steam seam. Steam seam comes in um, different sizes, but you want 24 inch. And this is what it looks like. It's two pieces of paper with glue in the middle. And I'll show you how you're gonna use that in just a minute here. And then you also need a 17 by 24 inch fuse mat. I don't, I have never used that in one of her collage kits. I don't know what that is and I didn't feel like buying another thing to do this so I'm using this this is fabric ease it's also Pelon 830 you can buy that at any craft store and sometimes your local quilt shops have it and um, so I'm gonna use fabric ease for this this project and that works just as good and you'll need it anyways to put your background fabric on and then she also shows that you need a number two pencil. I don't use a number two pencil. I use a pen or I use a Sharpie or you can use a number two pencil. Anything works, it really doesn't matter. And then you need scissors. You need Karen Buckley scissors and these are Jim Holt scissors. And what's special about these kind of scissors is they have this serrated edge and what that does is it keeps the fabric from raveling because you're not gonna sew around all the edges of every piece of fabric you put onto this project. So you want the serrated edge scissors. And then you have this big goddess sheet and that's a pressing sheet that you're gonna use when you attach the steam seam two to your fabric. And I'll show you how you're gonna use that in a minute. But that, that is definitely something you'll want to have. It's not necessary, but it is helpful to have. And you can get that on Amazon or sometimes your local quilt shops will have it too. Anyways, so now we're moving on. I'm taking the steam seam two and I'm separating the two pieces of paper and I'm putting the sticky side with the glue on the bottom. So um, it's a little hard to separate, but 
you can see I'm gonna put my iron and my hand is on the sticky part you can see my irons kind of sticking to it and then I'm gonna take my fabric with the right side up and place the wrong side of the fabric on top of the sticky part and then I'm gonna smooth it over and spread it out and get all the wrinkles out it is sticky so it takes a little bit of work Once you have your fabric attached to the steam seam, you're going to use that big goddess sheet, the pressing sheet, and you're going to put that on top of the fabric and on top of any of the stickiness. And what this does is it protects your iron from the glue because if you iron that over the glue, it's going to stick to your iron and mess up your iron and you do not want that. And you want to iron the fabric to the glue and then that glue is going to be stuck to the bottom side of your fabric you want to turn the steam on i i always turn the steam on um, laura heine's directions say not to turn the steam on but i find that if i turn the steam on it it goes over that pressing sheet really smoothly and if i don't have the steam on it kind of gets gummed up on the pressing sheet so I use the steam. You don't have to. It's up to you. So I'm just going to go over all my fabric. And then every time you go over any exposed glue with your pressing sheet, that glue will stick to your pressing sheet. You just wipe it off and then go back and, uh, to your next piece of fabric. So I'm just showing you a little bit of me ironing my fabric. I won't show you all of it because I think you get the idea. I did go through more than two yards of steam seam for this project, by the way. I always go over the recommended amount of steam seam for these collage kits. Okay, so once you're done ironing all your fabric to the steam seam, you're going to take a rotary cutter or scissors, either one, and I just not so carefully cut it up. And um, then I can organize my fabrics. So here you see I'm taking the fabrics and cutting them up. No big deal. I'm not using a ruler. I'm not being careful about it. It's uh, just nonchalantly cutting them up. I'm going to cut out this background fabric and you'll have to check the pattern to get the measurement for that and now I'm going to cut out the top border and the right side border strips and you'll want to use a ruler and cut those out pretty exact
Next, I'm going to cut out the four corner blocks of my background fabric. Okay, so now I'm going to take a, fab a piece of Fabric Ease, bigger than this piece of paper that comes with a pattern, and I'm going to tape it on top of this white piece of paper, and I'm going to trace out the boots. And I'm using a little Sharpie, but I end up using a thicker Sharpie to go over it. But you can use whatever you want. This is where she recommended the number two pencil, but it's just too thin. I like a bigger pen that I can see with. And then once you're done, you're going to, uh, well, well, we're going to start by filling in these top front portions of the boots. So what you do is you separate your fabric from the paper, making sure that the stickiness is sticking to the fabric and you're going to lift the fabric but don't remove it from the paper just lift it up enough to cover the portion that you want to cut out so once you have the fabric removed away from the paper then you're going to trace it and then once you've traced it you're going to put the fabric back over the paper and press it down and then turn it over and you'll cut out your shape. If it's hard to cut because the paper and the fabric aren't attached and it's moving around too much, you can take it back to your ironing board and put the iron over it and then the glue will stick back to the paper and it'll be easier to cut again. This is the overlay technique that Laura Heine refers to in her, um, in her pattern. And this is the overlay technique we're going to use to do all of the boots. So again, I'm using the same technique. I just lifted the fabric up from the paper. I didn't remove the fabric from the paper. I just moved it away, traced it. Well, it came apart, but... I'm going to put it back on top, press it down, you can take it to the iron it, or, I'm sorry, take it to the iron, um, iron it on there, it'll stick again, and then cut out your shape. And then you can uh, attach it to the fabric ease. The great thing about fabric ease is because you're using Steema Seam 2, it will not stick permanently to the fabric ease. You can move it around as many times as you want until you actually iron it to the fabric ease. It's not going to stick and so we can play with it as much as we want. Adjust it as many times, it, it's fine. My cuts aren't perfect and that's okay because you can, they, they kind of butt up to each other, but sometimes I stick them underneath, sometimes I stick them on top of each other a little bit. It's okay, it, it all works. If you want to make it perfectly butt up, that's fine. If you want it to go underneath a hair, that's fine.
you see on this one I I butt it up to the fabric and it works out perfectly so now I'm going to show you in high speed how I put together the rest of the boot if you want you can fast forward to the next portion or you can watch along and see how I put the boot together
Okay, now we're going to go back to the background. And I have a big piece of fabric ease. I measured it at 33 by 38 inches, which is the measurement on the front of her pattern. And I'm going to take the top border and take off the back of the steam seam paper. And I'm going to stick it down to the fabric ease and then add my two square blocks. Then I'm going to add the right side border. Remove the back of the steam seam paper and stick it down to the fabric ease. And do the left border. Then add the other two blocks. And our bottom border. Then we're going to take the main piece of background, remove it from the steam of seam paper making sure that the sticky part is stuck to the fabric. If it's not stuck to the fabric, take it back to the ironing board and give it another go on the iron to make sure that the sticky part is sticking to the fabric. And then we're going to lay it down in the middle. And it doesn't matter if you do the main background first or the borders first. I did the borders first, but you, it, it doesn't matter. You can do either one first. Then I'm going to take off my borders and readjust them and I'm going to slightly overlay them on top of the main border fabric to make sure it's straight and then readjust my corners. And that border, I didn't need to overlay it. I just put it directly next to that fabric because it was perfectly straight. But you can see the bottom here is not perfectly cut. So I'm going to take the bottom border and I'm going to lay it on top uh, to give it that clean line. There, now I have a nice clean line. Smooth everything out as best you can. And then I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to square up my sides. I'm going to cut off the extra fabric ease. And then once I'm done with that, I will iron my fabrics to the fabric ease so that they are permanently in place. And that will be my background and that is my main piece of fabric and the that fabric will be permanently stuck to the fabric ease and that's fine you can sew over that it'll be on there forever and it's super thin so it's not a problem
Now we're going to take our boots and we're going to line that up in the middle and I'm going to use my ruler to see where I need to put the boots and we're going to move it. We're going to take our boots and realign them and put them back on the uh, background of our, our uh, well, we're going to move them. <laughs> so if you get lost or things aren't matching up you can take the boots that you have on the fabric ease with, with that you have it traced on and just lay it over on top i had a hard time with this because i've never done this technique before Th this was new for me with a laura heine pattern i've always just uh well i've always done it differently if you've watched my other videos um I've used a different technique and this is the first time I've used this technique so it took me about 15 minutes to figure out but here you can see I'm just laying the whole paper over it and then putting my fabric underneath to realign myself and figure out where I need to be but you'll get it it's not too hard it's just different but it's not hard you can get it The good thing is, is it's steam sink too, and you can play with this fabric and move around with it all day. And then when you're all done and you've got everything in place, take a picture of it with your cell phone. Make sure everything's where you want it to be and it looks great. And then give it a second look, sleep on it, <laughs> and then come back to it and then iron it down. And see these little lines right here? I got a little bit of white showing in the background and my fabric's a little frayed. Well, don't worry about it because we're going to add all these flowers on the boot and we're going to cover up those lines and it's going to look perfect when it's done. So we're going to take these fabrics, all these florals, and we're going to cut out our flowers and add them to our boots. And this is going to be the funnest part of the project. I love this part. This is where you get to be really creative. Oh yeah, and then see this little square right here? We're gonna add the cow skull into that square. We're gonna use this blue skull fabric. You're gonna cut out that skull and then those squiggly lines. We're gonna cut those out and then we're gonna add them to that fabric too. And here you have it. We cut out a bunch of flowers and I, I placed them based on her pattern. I was looking at her picture and that's how we placed a majority of the fabrics. And then once we got the main flowers on there, then we just kind of threw the little flowers wherever we wanted and got creative. So my daughter's helping me. Those are her little baby hands in there. She's six. We had a lot of fun doing this together. And there is no right or wrong to this process. You can be as creative as you want. Put the flowers however you want. If you have other fabrics at home that you think would go good with this other than what come in, came in the kit, go ahead and add them. Um, I would just say that the boots are separate, so make sure that the flowers don't cross over the boots. Make sure that the flowers stay on each boot separately. Once you're all done and you have all your flowers placed, again, I like to take a picture on my cell phone and then look at it that way or take a, t take a step back and look at it and make sure everything looks good. It's where you want it. Sometimes sleep on it for a night, come back to it. And then when you're absolutely sure everything's where you want it to be, then iron it. 
because once you iron it and use steam use lots and lots of steam and really iron it then everything will be there permanently and you won't be able to move it again and you can't iron this enough trust me as a long armor and sewing these things the more you iron the better And that's it. Once you got all your flowers on and you iron it. So what you can do with this is you can add some background or so, I'm sorry, you can add some backing and some batting and you can sew it together. Just throw some horizontal lines through it on your domestic machine or your long arm machine and then add a binding and there you go. You have a beautiful wall hanging. Throw it up in your house and you're good to go. Or if you want to make a quilt out of it, you can treat it like a panel, like a thick panel, add some borders, turn it into a quilt. Lots of people like to do that and uh, it'll be a beautiful quilt. That's not a problem too. It's super cute. This was a fun one to make. So I hope you guys learned some tips and tricks and um, I hope this was a helpful video for you. And there you have it. She's all done. Beautiful as can be. Thanks guys so much. I'll see you on the next one.